It's generally accepted in the West that women are equal before the law and should have bodily autonomy. Both Ella and Dominic spoke about this earlier in regard to abortion. But here I want to illustrate that in regard to female circumcision, when called FGM, female genital mutilation, autonomy and equality are legally denied to specific women in the UK. But circumcision is not illegal for men or for other women because what's termed FGM for some is actually genital cosmetic surgery for others. Additionally, the FGM law infantilizes specific women by defining them as children. Let me elaborate. In the West, female circumcision is generally discussed in regard to racialized others. In 1985, the UK's FGM law specifically differentiated and made illegal what was carried out as a cultural practice from that done within a Western context for medical reasons. Ironically, now to fit a new Western cultural ideal, cosmetic surgeries have grown in popularity mainly among white women and teens. Many have genital surgeries like labiaplasty. These, for others, are known as FGM. Generally, wherever female circumcision is practiced, so is male. Yet only the female type is illegal, despite that some symbolic and minor forms like clitoral pricking and clitoral hug removal are far less severe than male circumcision is. Most of the circumcised women and girls in the UK have undergone a form of the practice before migrating. Now, despite hype to the contrary, the only types of FGM under 18s undergo here are genital piercings, predominantly in Caucasian teens. Piercers, quite rightly, are not being prosecuted for this. Another anomaly relates to when a girl legally becomes a woman. In the UK, it's 18 years. But exceptionally, the FGM law says girl includes woman. So specific women are considered children incapable of consenting to female circumcision or genital cosmetic surgeries ever. A minority of circumcised women, of circumcised African women will have been infibulated. And that means that they had their external labia stitched together. This is traditionally done in childhood some girls will have experienced problems as a result, while others won't. In growing up, this will have informed a girl's sense of herself. Some grow to like the smooth, closed look of their vulva. After all, what's normal for some is abnormal for others. Almost 4,000 infibulated or de-infibulated women and girls were seen in the UK's health service between 2015 and 20. But a woman cannot be re-infibulated even if that might be her preference, because legally she's considered a child. Similar applies in countries like Kenya, where female circumcision is also illegal and anti-FGM activism is rife. Consequently, uncircumcised women there have been ostracized for not having undergone this rite of passage. So it's been driven underground. In November, 22 Kenyan women were each jailed for four months for choosing to be circumcised as adults. Many anti-FGM activists, believing the women incapable of consenting, support their imprisonment. They actively collude in undermining what agency these women have. But a Kenyan doctor is seeking to have female circumcision decriminalized, believing it infringes women's rights there. She also believes it hypocritical that only men can legally be circumcised. I believe that selectively using the law against sometimes harmful traditional cultural or religious practices for women is wrong. But the way to right this wrong is not to criminalize male circumcision, rather to decriminalize female. Women should have the freedom to choose what they do with their bodies. And it's far better to persuade people of the need for change, not force it on them. Thank you. <laughs>